Pantheon, etymology, El Elyon, Allah, let's get into all of this stuff. So yesterday, we looked at ancient Canaanite Pantheon, Al Elyon, Asherah, Anat, Ashtar, Baal, etc, etc, etc. We also looked at the name of God. So from a biblical perspective or a Torah Tanakh perspective, when you ask who God is, because there's like two different gods within the text that will break down eventually. But when you ask people who is God, like who was the first God in the Bible uh, that's mentioned, we looked at previously, we looked at the Al Elyon references. Quite popular in religion, notably Christianity, um, Torah, Tanakh, Bible. Uh, in particular, this is a very popular name to invoke. God. All right. Cool. So we started looking at who El Elyon was in the Levant. So the Levant's a particular location. Many different cultures, um, stories, mythologies. So you had El Elyon, who was the head of most pantheons in and around that locale so the Ugaritic, the Canaanites so on and so forth so Al Elyon he was known as the top or the highest in authority he was also known as the father of the gods or the father of the patriarchs he was also known as a creator god a lot of attributes titles and accolades went to Al Al Elon, Al Elion. He was also anamorphically depicted as a bull, and his constellation was Saturn. Now, in the Levant, different Ugaritic and Canaanitish and Hurrian and different, like I said, mythologies, they say he might have had X amount of children. The common figure being 70, which if you read the Bible, you'll see 70 people came down in different versions when it talks about the Tower of Babel. So you can see how all of these stories are influenced and how they all intertwine, intertwine and mesh within certain narratives, which is interesting. So that was just a quick little recap about the father of heaven or the father of the gods, uh, Al Elyon. All right. We also looked at verses in the scriptures to our Elyon. Also today, I know I was going to look at a particular topic. I'm not. I'm going to hold fire on that. I'm waiting until I get um, some things sorted out with my equipment before I get into it properly and do the videos as previously. So I'm just going to be doing one or two little live streams like this. Uh, not going too deep, very shallow, so that we can, I guess, get deeper into the deep end of the pool. All right? So... We looked at this guy, El Elyon. You have angels in the Bible, so obviously you have angel names, but the names have a meaning. So you have Mike El, who is like El. Gabriel, El is powerful, all right? Then you have Icab or Jacob, because I and J are synonymous. We're going to get there. Anyway, so. Jacob called the name of the place Bethel, but the name of the city was called Luz at the first. So Bethel means the house of El. All right. And we showed you a couple of references, Genesis, Psalms, talking about El Elyon being the most high God of Canaan. So the Levant, the region of the Levant is Haiti or Haiti which is a provenance in Turkey. You have Cyprus, you have Israel, you have Jordan, you have Lebanon, you have Palestine, you have Syria. There's probably a few more in that mixture, but that makes up the area, the region of the Levant. You have Babylon in there too. You have all kinds of different places in and, in and within that region, all right? So the idea of Elion or Al having 70 children reflects a common motive in ancient Near Eastern religions, where a high god presides over a pantheon or council of lesser deities. All right, so what is a motif then? A motif is a symbolic image or idea that appears frequently in a story. So Bible, 70 um, tongues, 70 
uh, dispersed at Babel, but that's not the only Babel story. There's loads of Babel stories in and around that region. But if you say about the Bible, they'll say yes, because that's the main popular story most people are familiar with. It's the most popular book, it's the most popular story, it's the most popular history that most people are taught. But there are other stories and histories that have similar, familiar tones as the Bible. So, what is a motive? A simple definition is a symbolic image or idea that appears frequently in a story. Motives can be symbols, sounds, actions, ideas, or words. So the concept of Elion having 70 children is rooted in ancient Near Eastern mythology and is more specifically associated with the Canaanite and the Ugaritic traditions. El Elion is a title that means Most High. In Hebrew, the Canaanite pantheon, Elion is often associated with the Supreme God, El. In some traditions, Elion is identified with El himself or a high-ranking deity. This is where you get this, the, the word Nobel means somebody of noble birth. We're going to break down all these words. When you start understanding the etymology of these words, you're like, whoa, it's kind of plain as Jane, bruh. Let's continue. Yigayao Yadin was an Israeli archaeologist, soldier, and politician. He was the second chief of staff of the Israel Defense Forces and deputy prime minister from 1977 to 19. 81. So quite an impressive resume, Israeli archaeologist, soldier, politician, second chief of staff of Israel Defense Forces, deputy prime minister. Wow, amazing. He most likely had a batch L a degree. I digress. But anyway, he wrote a book called Bar Koba, the Re discovery of the legendary hero of the second Jewish revolt against Rome. He also wrote a book, The Temple Scroll, The Hidden Law of the Dead Sea. So this guy, like I said, archaeologist, uh, politician, quite up there, as it were. Let's hear what he had to say. In his book, The Temple Scroll, Yigal Yadin reproduces the Hebrew text of Deuteronomy in which Elohim is commonly used. If Yahweh refers to himself as Elohim, which is actually false, but we'll bring out the evidences on that, we'll see the change of God as it takes place in the Bible, outside the Bible, with the corresponding evidences. But we'll hold fire on all of that stuff because, yeah, it's a madness. So if Yahweh refers to himself as Elohim, who is any man to say it is wrong? Would Moses, who was inspired to write the first five books of the Bible, ever use a pagan term for our creator? The terms El and Elohim could not have crept into a later text of the scripture if they had, if they already appeared in the earliest one. Now listen to what he says now. Because no manuscripts have been found that are older than the Dead Sea Scrolls. We conclude that Yahweh inspired the term Elohim. Moses wrote it and Israel used it. Interesting. When you start to understand this Moses person is a very fictitious character and I know a lot of people's prophecies and hopes and, and ambitions are peddled on Moses, but Moses is, uh, is myth. Exodus and them things there are myth, but I get it, it hurts, it cuts. We're going to get into that. We're going to see there's been a program to give us this Moses thing on steroids, especially a certain community, but we'll hold fire. So anyway, so this guy here is arguing the toss that it's a legit legitimate thing, nothing um, disingenuous about it. He's got the accolades to, to back his claims and, and, you know, most likely has a bachelor degree. But this is my question. If Al were a pagan reference, why do so many patriarchs retain Al in their names? Elijah, Eliah, Elisha, Eleazar, Ezekiel, Daniel, Joel, and many others. Fair point. So, in Genesis 16 13, it's interesting. Hagar, who's an Egyptian, and she's also the mother of Ishmael, 
who is a relative of Israel, um, she, when she has an encounter with her angel, she says, you are El Roy. For she said, in this place, have I actually seen the one who sees me? Interesting. She said, Al, Roy. <laughs> Interesting. Then, around the ninth hour, Jesus, or as his name should be called, a man, you, Al, cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, Lima Sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, I know people translate it many different ways about don't forget the Sabbath and all this kind of stuff. Whether it's true, whether it's not true, whether it is, whether it isn't. The fact of the matter is, his name's Emmanuel, and he says, a lie, a lie. Why have you forsaken me? Interesting. So Jesus is the son of Al Elyon. All right, now, it's interesting as well that the angel gives the name Ishmael, meaning Al will hear. Then you have Angel, that gives Jesus his name, Emmanuel, meaning Al with us, or God with us. Taking a quick pit stop, just to look at this great scroll of Isaiah, which was discovered in 1946, 1947. The reason the scroll of Isaiah is very important in the realms of Hebrew Abrahamic mythology is because the great scroll of Isaiah, it has future prophecies of a third temple being built, which resonates with the evangelicals and the Jews. Not only that, it also has connotations to a virgin birth or virgin birth prophecy which resonates with Catholicism and Islam and branches of Christianity and on the flip side again it has prophecies of a third temple nature and future prophecies which resonate with other communities but the timing of these divinely discovered documents is very interesting and we're going to find out more when we look at a topic or a study on the Prime Minister of England because these things have been planned out way in advance and I'll show you how we're just they're just literally working to a schedule <laughs> and saying it's a prophecy anyway we'll hold fire on that so Israel's titles for God so some titles that Israel used for God is Elah Israel God of Israel Elah Yerushalem, Ella, Shemaya, Ella, Avahati, Ella, Elahin. Yeah, you see all these little references for God in the Bible. Interesting. So here are the 99 titles for Allah. Again, I don't bat for any side, I don't bat for the the, the Islamic side, the Hebrew side, the Christian side, because I've, I've just understood quite recently the whole thing's mythology. The whole thing's not even historical. It's ahistorical. You have to look into that for yourself. Gets to a point, you have to call a spade a spade. So anyway, you have Israel and the titles of their God, Allah, 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 Allah. Then you have 99 titles for Allah. I'm not going to put the 99. But what I found quite interesting when you look at the titles for Allah, which we know according to popular um, consensus they say that there was 99 idols and they relegated the one they relegated the 98 and they were left with the one supreme one which was Allah which is really Hubal but that's another story to get into you had Almanat you had all these different variations within the pre-Islamic pantheon of the Arabian Peninsula but that history before these Abrahamic religions doesn't really get taught which is interesting but it's for a very the obvious reason so the 99 titles of Allah are quite interesting you have Ar Rahman Ar Rahman which is like I said interesting then you have Ar Rahim Ar Rahim interesting you have Al Alim again finish it off interesting you have Al Al Wekel El. You have A Salam. We're gonna look at Salam. Salam's interesting. I see a lot of people Salam Salam. I'm like, okay, we'll look into that one. That's interesting too. Like I said before, a lot of things people believe. It's nice to have belief, but I like to have facts. It's nice to have a belief, but it's always good to know. R. Kelly believed he could fly. I believe I can. That's cool. Jump out the window. Let's see if that theory has any facts. All right. 
So al wakal a salam al jalil are just some of the titles of Allah. Again, some of the titles of Israel. Allah, Israel, Allah, Allah, Allah. It gets a bit interesting. All right, cool. So some more titles for Israel's titles of God. Elion, Most High Al, Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai, Al Alam, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's keep going. So remember I did a presentation and I was like, whoa, how come this name's in the Bible? I wouldn't expect it to be in the Bible. I thought it was at variance with the Bible. All right, check this then. So Ella may refer to Edom, the name of an Edomite clan. Ella, a name of a god in Judaism. Ella, the father of Hosea, the last king of the Israelite kingdom of Israel. King Ella, the fourth king of Israel. Valley of Ella, where the biblical David fought Goliath. Again, David's an interesting character. Hmm. Ella, Hebrew word for Terebinif. Ella, Terao, an American architect. And then Ella, the hydrochloride salt of an antimicrobial compound. Okay, going off on one. But you can see there's some weird, interesting sounds, sounds in the words, words, sounds, sounds, and words, etymology. Then it says, in direct reference to Ella, see Allah, an L, and Elahi, and Alayar, and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> it's interesting. Wow. Now in your Bibles, it also says, it has the word Allah in the Bible. Again, I don't bat for any side. I'm not, I'm no Allah thing or uh, this thing. I'm just making that plain before people say, look, he's left and which one? No, I'm looking at the thing as it is. It's a myth. It's a, patri it's a patriarchal myth of a pantheon. All nations fighting for the supremacy of their God, their culture, at the expense of killing other people. Essentially is what it is. When you take off all the wrappings and all that kind of stuff. And I'll show you with the evidences in and outside of the text. Now, Deuteronomy 29 verse 12. Again, these first five books of the Bible are very interesting to say the least. Especially these Exodus accounts. But our whole fire, let's just stay with the presentation. Deuteronomy 29 verse 12. That thou shouldest enter into a covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, Allah, which the Lord or Elohim, thy God, make with thee this day. So the word oath, oath of a covenant, oath, covenant, also could be a curse, also could be from God, could be from men, could be from excretion, is the word Allah. Now above the word Allah that you can see here, I'm going to put a little arrow so you can maybe see. All right, let's make this plainer than Jane, hotter than Spain. So you see here, this name, you have these little dots on top of the name. That's how you emphasize the word. So it'd be like, Allah, yeah? That's in your Bible. That's, that's in the Bible, the name Allah. You can say, oh, it's not the Allah of the, the Islam thing. All right, cool, but I'm just saying the name Allah is in there, which is quite interesting. And that's H423, and it means an oath. To swear an oath. So let's just be plain as Jane. No time to complain. So Allah or a law. Curse. Cursing. Excretion. Oath. Swearing. Alright? So when you go to the Mesopotamian mythologies, like I said, are, do you honestly, are you really familiar with the mythologies and the Levant? Or are you only aware of the biblical mythology or the Hebrew mythology, the most supreme mythology? There's other mythologies within that same area which predate the Hebrew mythology and the Hebrew stories. That's just a fact. Anyway, so you have Allah Alu or Allah Allah or Alala <laughs> was a primordial figure in the Mesopotamian and Hurrian mythology. He's also known from documents from Imar where he was known as Al Al. While his role was not identical in these three contexts, it is agreed that all three versions share the same origin. Al Alu was worshipped in Imar, where he was known under a shortened uh, name Al Ala or Al Al. John Tracy Thames assumes that he was one of the few deities belonging to the local pantheon who were introduced to it from Mesopotamia. So let's look at this 
L and L because they're interchangeable. L and L, L and L. It's all interchangeable stuff. All right. L is a common Semitic word for God and appears in various forms across the ancient Near Eastern cultures. In Canaanite mythology, L was the chief deity of the Canaanite pantheon. The name L is also found in the Ugaritic texts, which is Ugaritic texts where L is portrayed as a supreme deity in the Ugaritic pantheon. Cool. Al is often seen as a variant or, or related term, especially in pre-Islamic Arabian contexts where Al or Aya, sometimes shortened to AI, is used to denote God or a God. Again, the Levant is the Eastern Mediterranean region of West Asia. This is where these, these God concepts come from. Now check this. I like names. I like I like etymologies i like names because names are like gps if you tell me your name sing i'm most likely gonna think maybe indian born sing maybe indian born maybe you understand say john smith i'm thinking maybe english born say o'grady i'm thinking maybe irish born you understand say chukawuku i'm thinking maybe nigerian born you know what i'm saying so certain names that just give people away names are like gps so you have this guy alu alu um I, I think he was from syria not a popular person it's a random person i was looking at the names and that and then you have kamal kamal um which was the prime minister of turkey or the president of turkey then you have rosenfall um i forgot what he was just showing the names more than anything just the similarities of names of alan l rachel and michael and um Eli and all that kind of stuff and again I've got my children have Ali in their name you know it's not it's not a thing about oh don't have Ali in your name it's all evil no I'm just showing you that all these God systems and belief systems they all come from mythologies that have been readapted and repurposed over time with the most popular story being the Bible version now these terms Al and Al reflect the shared linguistic and cultural heritage of the ancient Levant and surrounding regions. The idea of a high god or chief deity represented by these names is widespread across various cultures including the Hittites, Babylonians and others. The, inchange, the interchangeability of El and Al highlights the interconnected nature of religious and cultural practices in the ancient Near East. Let me get Arrow. You're gonna look into all these names as well. You'll see it's, it's plain as day when you start looking into this thing, fresh, outside of the context. All right, so there's Alaka. That's actually a place. I mean, let me not use this mouse, this uh, arrow. We're gonna break down all these names. <laughs> the names of the, the city gods that people are calling on as if they're like legit things, where it's just a pantheon deity that represented the city. It's mad. So you have Ala Alak there in Syria. Woo. You have Kadesh, I ain't gonna touch on Kadesh, I'll leave Kadesh alone for now. We'll leave little Kadesh alone. Biblios. But I'm just gonna show you this one here. Al Al Ak. Ak in Arabic means brother. It's just interesting. The linguistics, you'll find all these uh, common denominators. Alright, we'll hold fire on that though. We'll come back to that another time. Now, one thing that was interesting when I was looking into this concept. In this, in the the, the uh, what you call it, these secret societies and secret orders, they say let there be light. Yeah. Now Elohim said, let there be light, and there was light. Now when you translate the word light, it's illumination or luminary in every sense, including light, ting, happiness, bright, clear day, light, morning, sun. But they say let there be light. That's one of their sharp lines. Elohim says let there be light. When you translate that word, it says, let there be illumination. I was like, whoa, that's interesting. Because what's that guy called? Adam Weishoff, who made the Illuminati and stuff like that? Interesting. On the fourth day, God created the sun. If God created the sun on the fourth day, how had four days passed? If the day is controlled by the sun. Just an interesting one. Now check this. When we revisit... We're going to revisit the Bible, especially the King James 1611, because there's some things that are missed on that presentation when I'm showing you that the Bible is a Masonic book and it was used by kings to rule their citizens. Gleaning from different cultures 
and making up a book. All right. So it's interesting as well. Elion, EE, free, free, 33. So here's a priest class. You have Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism. These part of a, these guys were part of a lodge of Oxfordshire, and these are where the Bibles and religious books are made and created. These are the scholars that work on people's books. Now, I've always found this, this image interesting. You can deconstruct it in your own time, objectively, if possible, if possible. But you have these steps, initiations and people getting initiated into certain brotherhoods. You have God, the whole seeing eye, let there be light. You have the Bible, which is right there, is the moral compass, as they call it. You have a priest with his red cross. You have a Muslim shriner um, over there. You have the globe on a stick, all right? Two globes, we're gonna break all these symbols down because this, this all goes back to a person called allegedly Solomon, but Solomon most likely never existed. A lot of these stories and that, you'll be surprised when you realize a lot of them are made up. And here you have Judaism. You can see all these religions and schisms are all one. At the top of the pyramid, you have church and state, army, priest, church and state. So anyway, when we revisit the Bible, uh, especially the King James 16 11, we're going to break down a lot of the symbolisms in that book. And we're also going to be revisiting the Al and the Al and Al. We're going to revisit that in more detail. 